as he spoke. He showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again he said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so and he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Paula. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> you pray with me? Um, Jesus, help me in my weakness to share the message of the power of God. I, I just find as I start that I'm, I feel, who is up to such a task as to preach your resurrection, as to tell of your great love? I read yesterday this um, amazing quote. Uh, it's by a guy called Jonathan Tremaine Thomas. He's a black uh, civil activist and, um, and he's a Christian, a wonderful pastor. And he said this. I love, love this, this thing that he said. And he said this. Yet on this weekend, the holiness and goodness of God erupts through the chaos with a stunning authority and unmatched beauty. Yeshua, Jesus, battered but not embittered, roasted the works of Satan and obliterated the stranglehold of death. Isn't that fantastic? As the resurrection and the life he is speaking to us today, he beckons you and I to come up higher and says, I have overcome for you. To those in bondage, he says, be free. To those who are tired, he says, come to me and I will give you rest. To those who are mourning loss, he says, for they are only sleeping. Yes, 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 but how? The way of the Christian is the way of Christ. And the way of Christ is the way of the cross to resurrection. So let's talk about what Easter actually means. Someone was in a, uh, was teaching a class earlier on in the week and um, one of the young people in there asked about when Jesus carried the chocolate egg on his back. For real. Let's talk about what the, what the Easter story actually means. We're not talking about bunnies. We're not talking about eggs as lovely and tasty as they are. The other day I was listening to, um, to the bird song. Any of you awake up early and like listening to the bird song? And, and it's a little bit, now that the clocks have changed, it's a little bit easier, isn't it? Because all of a sudden it's not like, yes, yeah, an hour later. And I was just listening, and you know how they just, they anticipate the dawn, don't they? You know that the dawn is coming. And they know the dawn's coming. And their, their song is like a cross between a song of praise to the creator and them like shouting to their neighbors saying, go off my land. That's, that's what the birds are doing. It's a combination of the two. But, you know, the birds anticipate the dawn. The disciples couldn't yet anticipate the dawn. They, you know, Jesus had told them, I'm going to die, I'm going to come back. But they couldn't get it. They couldn't understand the, the promise that he'd made. And yet, throughout scripture, the, the prophets, they had said it was going to happen. Jesus himself had said it was going to happen. And in that last week, just to remind you, in case your, your memory of the story is a bit hazy, Jesus had started um, by coming into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey to adulation and praise and palms and carpets of cloaks and stuff. And they'd shouted Hosanna to the son of David and all of that. And then he'd gone in and he'd flipped over the, temp the tables in the temple and, and just caused havoc. And then um, he'd, he'd withdrawn from the city, then he'd come back in, he'd shared the Last Supper with his friends in that meal that we're going to share in a moment. And then um, 
He'd gone out to the Garden of Gethsemane where one of his best friends betrayed him with a kiss. And then he was uh, marched off in the, the dead of night for a kangaroo trial with, and kind of marched between Pilate and Herod and Pilate and the religious leaders. And in the end, he was given over to death and he was flogged and he was spat on and he had a crown of thorns put on his head and he had a cloak put around his shoulders. And, and then eventually sentenced to death by uh, the most cruel way that Rome could devise, which in the end they actually outlawed because it was too cruel. And, and he, he, he was the one who took the, the cross beam of the cross through the streets of Jerusalem and uh, nails put through his hands and his feet and hung there, all the while breathing out forgiveness and grace upon grace, forgiving those who had crucified him, uh, uh, putting his mother into a family that, so that she was looked after, speaking to the, the guy on the cross next to him and promising him paradise. And then commending his spirit into the hands of his father, trusting that it was his father's will. It was immense. It was incredible what Jesus did on that last week, wasn't it? Yes. Get some nods. It was amazing. And then on the third day, that stone was rolled away and Jesus met with his disciples, met uh, first with just one or two of, his, uh, of, the, of the ladies that were in his group and he announced that he had risen from the dead. Now, I'm not going to spend particularly time talking about the, the resurrection like as in the facts of it today. Um, most historians agree that Jesus, well, nearly all historians agree that Jesus was a real man, that he lived, that he existed, that he had a massive impact on the world. Many, most historians agree that he was crucified. It wasn't just in uh, the gospel records. But what we believe is that Jesus rose again, that he rose from the grave, and that he now is alive and with us by his spirit. And what that did was it transformed the disciples. Whereas they had been hidden away, freaked out and scared for fear of the Jews, uh, for those who had killed their Lord. Now, all of a sudden, they're transformed into lions. Literally, they, they then felt able to stand in front of lions in the arena within a generation and... And, and face down death because they would rather die than, than bow the knee to Emperor Caesar. How amazing was that, their witness? And yet they were so weak. You know the stories of the disciples, don't you? You know that they were fragile and they, they messed up. What transformed those weak disciples into roaring lions? Weakness is a horrible word in our society, isn't it? Just say the word weakness. A bit louder, weakness. If weakness was a face, it would be this. Do you know what I mean? If weakness was a pose, it would be this. It would be just, uh, you know, mainstream media and governments and education and policies and sports and stars and businessmen all would like just, it's all about success. It's all about wealth. It's all about power. Weakness is a thing to be kicked away, isn't it? It's like, ugh, who wants to be weak? I remember hearing a, a guy when I was a student teach on this, and he said, who wants to be weak? No one. And yet, and this is so important, my friends, uh, an awareness of our weakness in comparison to God is the way of the cross, and it's actually the way into life and power. And there's no other way. We can blow up mountains. We can transform landscapes. We can destroy the atmosphere we breathe. We can develop a vaccine to help cure COVID. We can transport ourselves to the moon and see pictures from Mars. And yet only Jesus and the power of the cross can transform the landscape of the human heart. Only Jesus can repair atmospheres of hate and pain. Only Jesus can bring a cure to sickness 
uh, of the human heart. Only Jesus can transport us into the throne room of God. We are uncomfortably weak. Only Jesus can do so much that we cannot do by ourselves. And the quicker we understand that, not that we're down on ourselves and we think we're terrible. We're not. You are loved. You are beautiful. You are precious. We just recognize where we are at and where God's at. Amen. This year, um, one microbe has brought nations and governments and businesses and careers and sadly hundreds of thousands of lives to an end. We've been reminded time and again of our fragility as a planet as well as all sorts of evidence of beauty and goodness. And Jesus said this. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the whole earth. Poverty, meekness. It's deeply un unfashionable, deeply countercultural. Let me just say this. Um, we cannot, if we're uh, in the business of, of proclaiming the gospel, miss sell this. Because most people who try and sell you something will, 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 will say all the good things and all the amazing things. And they'll hide the uncomfortable truths and the small print. I just want to say to all of you and you who are watching online that, that it's not small print. The way of the cross is the way of death that leads to life. Uh, and... Uh, and actually, in fact, just look around. And if you, if you would say that Jesus, uh, even in the, in fact, especially in your own weakness, in your own need, has impacted your life and changed your life, would you just wave a hand? And I just want to see. I'm just going to do a little flip around here. Just... Ed, I don't know if this is going to end up back where it started, but... You're, hey? I'll pick up the whole tripod. <laughs> you know, on the 12-step program, uh, which many of uh, you and many of us find really helpful... It begins, doesn't it? It begins where uh, we admit that we're powerless. Where we come to believe that a power, God, is greater than ourselves. Where we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God. We make a fearless inventory of, uh, of the things of, our, of ourselves. Admit to God and to others the nature of our wrongs. And are ready to have God remove those defects of character. That, my friends, is the way of the cross. It's a way of, it's a way of reality. We can, now, there is weakness in Scripture to be overcome and addressed. It might be moral weakness, habits, addictions. It could be um, personality traits that actually it's right to keep talking to God about. And, and, and by his grace, we can overcome those things. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a weakness that recognizes where we're at and where God's at. That Jesus demonstrated. Jesus was the one who set aside his power, set aside his strength, became utterly reliant upon his father. And he, he became weak. He let go of power and authority. He entered the world through uh, a, a, a stable birth, lived a refugee life and a peasant upbringing. He didn't defend himself at his trial. He died on the cross naked and helpless. He entrusted the news of his resurrection to supposedly weak women. And then he sent his disciples out, not many of them, with only the things that they stood up in and said, go and tell others about me. And they changed the world forever. These weak, supposedly weak guys... 
Or, or, or Paul, in his letter to, two Corinth, uh, to the Corinthians, he says, um, my grace is, God says, my grace is all you need. My power is made perfect in weakness. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles I suffer for Christ. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. So what I want to say this morning, and I know this is a slightly different take from your average Easter sermon is this. But it's been a rather different than average year. It's that resurrection, Easter, the Easter message isn't simply about the resurrection of Jesus. That's where it starts and ends. I mean, that's just... In, but it's about saying, God, here I am. I recognize uh, my weakness and my inability because that's when the power of the resurrection can get to work in our lives. It's actually a joyful thing to be able to come to God and say, God, you know everything about me. You know the beautiful bits and the gifts and, and my qualities, but you also know my fragility and my weakness and you love me and you welcome me. And then, because our hands are empty of pride and self-righteousness, he can fill our hands. Does that make sense? That's the way of the cross. Let's return just briefly to Jesus' followers. After the resurrection, the Holy Spirit was poured out on his followers. And it's the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives that, led them, that, be, that made them become the lions that they became. As they went out and they transformed the world. And it's the Holy Spirit who's present with you, with you, in you, if you love the Lord uh, now that can use you to bring God's resurrection power to the world. And it starts with this. I confess, I, I mooted this idea to, to Emma, and I was going to go out into the vestry and um, pretend that I had taken all my clothes off. Would you... <laughs> And then I decided that the mental image of that would probably scar people for life. And I decided not to. Um, but it starts with this. It starts by um, shedding our, our old clothes, our old self, at the foot of the cross. And, you know, whether it's pride or rebellion or self-righteousness, I'm going to trip myself up. I'm going to say, there we go. And just leaving those like rags at the foot of the cross and allowing Jesus to put his righteousness, his holiness around you so that when the Father looks at you with the same love that he loves his son, he just sees his son in you, shining in you, shining through you. And then... When we have, uh, when we've admitted our weaknesses, and we've when we've believed in Him, that same Holy Spirit that we spoke of comes and fills you. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for all that you went through for us. Thank you that for the joy set before you, you endured the cross and you scorned its shame and you became weak for us. I'm going to invite you uh, online and anyone in the room who has never prayed this way to give your life to Jesus, to finally admit that uh, we need him, to thank him for his love for us, and to ask for his life to fill us as he forgives us. It's an opportunity, as Emma said, to reaffirm uh, our commitment to Christ if, you've, uh, if you'd like to do that as well. Jesus, I thank you 
Thank you for the cross. Thank you that you died for me. Thank you that in, in shedding your blood there, you paid for my sin. You brought me back from slavery. That in becoming, coming down from heaven to earth to become one of us, you have now invited us into the Holy of Holies. The temple, the temple curtain was torn so that we could come into your presence without fear as beloved sons and daughters of God. Jesus, I receive your forgiveness. I ask that you will come and fill my life with the life of Jesus. That you will fill me with power and begin to shine through me with resurrection power today. In Jesus' name, amen. And just... um, Just before I I explain what's going to happen next, I wonder if if any of you prayed that for the first time, uh, or you prayed it and actually you've been a long way from God, and this has been a moment for you to come back to God. We don't do this every week by any means, but I just wondered, it's good to say in front of God and in front of others, that was me. I've given my life either again to, to Jesus or for the first time. Can you just wave a hand if you did? We're not going to look around and look at you. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. That's awesome. You, you didn't see all that. Um, uh, there's a handful of people. Can we just um, say thank you to God for that and, uh, and, and give them a clap? Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. What we're going to do is, in just a moment's time, I think after another song, is that right, Emma? Um, we're going to, have a, going to have a song. I'm going to prepare this. And this is our opportunity to respond. We're going to be invited to come forward. Um, we'll have someone stewarding you so that we don't have too many people queuing up, etc. And you're invited to come and to to thank Jesus for all that he's done this Easter as you receive bread. Um, It's bread at the moment, um, hopefully not for much longer. Um, And then as you go down the side aisles, if you have got a piece of glass, I invite you to to place it on on the, the, the metal glass plate at the back. If you haven't, there's, um, there's a table full of beach glass. Not, don't touch lots of bits, just choose a bit and pick it up and then place it on the glass. And really, this is a way of us together, as we come back together, um, these little bits of glass can almost represent you and represent your life with, uh, with its imperfections, as beach glass is, it's imperfect. And say, Jesus, as I place this on the, on the, in the cross, which is the, it's a cross shape there, will you shine through me by your power? And this is just a corporate, collective response of worship. And what we're going to do, um, it won't be in exactly the same format there. We're going to put it into uh, resin and make a kind of a stained glass window um, uh, like that will hang on the wall, lit um, in some way. Uh, and it'll just be a reminder that you can say, that was the day when I asked Jesus to shine through me. Um, as kind of a corporate act of worship. Does that make sense? So, is it another song now? Great. Where'd you appear from? Was he, you there all the time? Oh, okay, there we go. Shall we stand? And these guys are going to sing, and then we're going to start uh, and come for communion.
with what we do at communion and communion it's like the wood of the cross but we make it into a table the cross is a place where Jesus died and the altar is the place where we commemorate that it's where we bring the rubbish of our lives and we look at the beauty of what Jesus did when he died and we can leave our rubbish there we leave it there in a place of transaction when we come to the altar. And so we just encourage you, if you're at home, ask God to come and meet you where you are and to make you clean, to take the rubbish that's in your life and show you his goodness, show you this new life that Jesus brought on the cross. And those of us here in person, know that you're welcome. If you know Jesus and you've asked him to come into your life and take your rubbish away, the altar is a place of transaction. It's a place where we come and say, Jesus, make me new. And so you're welcome to come. We, we encourage you to come and know that you don't have to have been here worshiping with us before. If you know Jesus, Sam will say this in the, in the liturgy, but if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're welcome and you're in family here. And just practically, for anyone that's never taken communion before and wants to and is like, oh, how do you do it here? Just come forward, distance. There'll be a steward that tells you how to come. Place your hands out and we'll drop the bread in your hands. You might want to pray, eat the bread, filter back round to your seat, the mosaics at the back. Mm. So don't feel like, oh, I don't know how to do it, or everyone's watching me. They're not. Yeah. You're welcome. Please come if that's on your heart. And equally, and just say that thing about um, the, the bird song as well. That, that, I think that might strike a chord with someone. Yeah, Sam shares at the very start of his sermon about birds anticipating the dawn. And I think for some of you, I had a sense that it's been a season where you've been waiting for the bird song. It's been a long, dark season, maybe a dark night of the soul. And you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting for the bird song. And they always say, it's always darkest before the dawn. It's always the darkest moment where you feel like, I just can't do it anymore. And he is risen, and the bird song is coming. Sometimes we come to communion and we say, thank you, God, for what you're doing. Sometimes it's like we're just gasping for air and we're like, please, I need hope. Wherever you're at now, hmm. know that he is risen, there is hope, and you can come to him. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Emma. 
And um, equally, you know, we always say there's no pressure in mags. If you uh, want to stay in your seat, that's okay. fine. If your mobility is such that you struggle to come up, we'll bring it to you. All right. So we're going to turn to these words now. Um, if you'd like to, join with me in the words that are in bold. The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples. Actually, would you like to stand? Stand with me. The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples, and he said, Peace be with you. And then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So why don't you just turn around, wave, um, throw virtual hugs to those around you, and just uh, say, The peace of God be with you. Peace of God be with you, my friends. Brilliant. Thanks, Ed. Okay. Do take a seat. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It's our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory, He's placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son and yet at the end they turned on him. On the night that he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body given for you all. And then Jesus gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which Jesus died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Send your Holy Spirit on us now, that by these gifts, with We may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And as Jesus taught us, we pray together. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
As I break this bread, I want to share, say to anyone uh, watching online that we, uh, you're with us uh, in spirit. I want to say to anyone that's listening outside, I don't know if there is, but anyone listening outside, you are included and you are welcome. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. The body and blood of Christ shed and broken for you. Amen. So my friends, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. Brilliant. So um, I'm going to ask, I don't know if we've asked anyone, um, maybe Claire or Virginia or Viv, would one of you just mind helping steward people to come up and um, making sure the queue doesn't get too long? Starting at the front and then working our way around. That'd be great. And Virginia, maybe you could stay at the back and, and sort out the, the people coming to the table. That'd be great.
So we're going to join. So many things to remember. <laughs> we're going to join in the prayer after communion together. I think it'll be on screen. Uh, it was just a minute ago. Brilliant. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Well, in a moment, we're going to have a video to send us out and then... We're going to sing Thine Be the Glory out loud, uh, outside, socially distanced, um, which would be fantastic, and um, uh, which you're allowed to do. Uh, all I'd ask is um, for this, you know, people are strange. They like take pictures and put stuff on social media. Like we had, we were filming out there the other day, and someone put on um, uh, Snapchat, there's a fight going on in St. Mags and no social distancing. They were filming uh, in Victorian costumes, so I'm not quite sure where they got that from. So it would be really helpful if when, you, when we go outside, we're going to sing Thine Be The Glory, stay in your bubbles and your family groups, and then if you want to chat, you, you can use the whole grounds if you want to catch up, um, but uh, not like clumps, if that's okay. Um, but if on the way out you haven't done, uh, put a piece of glass there, um, please do, and just prayerfully engage with that. Where's Joe? My Joe. Do you want to come and talk to us? Those of you that are online, we're going to put a piece of glass there um, for each one of you. We're going, to, um, we, we're going to guess how many we think of you have been on, plus some. And uh, we're, going to put, uh, we're going to put a piece of glass on for you because you are participating today. Yeah. And um, do you want me to shift that? Hello. Is it on? Yes. Oh, great. Okay, thanks to everybody. Whoa, thanks to everybody online. It's been wonderful to see you. We had about 40, and then some mysterious connection got lost and they disappeared. And so, for a little while there, we didn't have um, online coverage, but then we got it back, and Ed worked like a Trojan trying to work it out. So, thanks to Ed. Um, today, we're just going to pray for Gareth um, that he finds God's peace and guidance. And uh, for a church family. So we're just going to pray that now. Lord God, we're praying for Gareth. We're praying that he would find a church family where he feels he belongs and he's supported. And we pray for guidance, Lord, that you would be with him. In Jesus' name, amen. And then we just want to say thank you, thankful for the baptisms that are coming. People are really excited. We want to pray for Trina, our pastor of the living room, um, because Ollie has covid and she's having to isolate with Ollie, and no, a lot of you know that, but can we just uh, raise a hand and a heart and just pray right now that we protect Trina mm. from COVID? Yeah. Lord Jesus, come. Holy Spirit, fill Trina and Ollie's home. Mm. I pray that Ollie gets well soon. This cough goes away. Thank you that he doesn't have a temperature. Lord God, fill that place, that whole house with your peace. I'm praying, Lord God, that Trina does not get COVID. Lord, if, if it is in there already, I just pray that she doesn't have bad symptoms. And may we as a church put our arms around them and support them and love them. And may they know your love today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And then great thanks for Mark Allport. Um, who's saying thanks to Jamie. And Trina saying, well done, Jamie. And Mark... Um, also gave his life to Christ live on prayers this week, live online, and it was amazing, and what a privilege it was, and lots of people actually said they prayed the prayer today, there's several online, so thank you for your honesty, and thanks for that. Okay. Brilliant, thank you, Joe. and um, if, if you could oversee making sure that the right number of pieces of glass go on to represent each person that's been here, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, yes, I did, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to uh, finish in just a moment. Um, a few quick announcements, um, if I can find them. First of all, 
it, over the course of these coming few months, as we prepare for increasing freedom uh, in, in the restrictions to be lifted, we hope, um, we are looking to build up three teams. Um, one, hospitality, so that we can again do hospitality really well. Secondly, uh, a tech team uh, to do Facebook and uh, do the sound and etc. And thirdly, we, uh, we recognize that... Um, that we haven't been able to do the children's work and the youth work that we would have loved to have over the course of this last year. But um, there's a sense that actually there's God's bringing new people to help with that already. And so if you're interested in, in joining with that, um, maybe leading, maybe helping as we're able to with the children, could you come, if you're interested in any of those three, could you maybe drop me an email or Claire and that would be fantastic. Um, We've got our APCM on, I think it's the 25th of this month. Um, watch for details of that. Don't worry about it today, but just put it in the diary. If you're not on the electoral roll and you'd like to be, there's forms at the back. And um, that's just a way of you saying, that this is kind of my church and um, I'd like to be um, seen as part of it. If you're interested in, in the Alpha course, there's a sign-up sheet at the back, as Jamie and, and others are talking about. Uh, that'll be starting in um, after Easter, there'll also be a, a Bible, some Bible study, maybe another Bible course, and maybe the prayer course part two. And on a Thursday, uh, a number of the ladies are going to be meeting together to, um, f- to, to look at a book together. And I'm going to be talking to the guys about what we can be doing, about how we can connect or reconnect as men, uh, just for this term, um, so doing some, some things a little bit differently. If you're signed up for that, that book group, there's books at the back with your names on. Um, Emma can direct you. Also, everybody gets a, an Easter egg today. And if you're a little one, you get a big Easter egg as well. Uh, just to say happy Easter. Great. Why don't we stand? We're going to just praise God. So this is my resurrection day. Um, then I'm going to pray a blessing. And then socially distanced Find a space outside, we'll whack the speaker up and we'll sing Thine Be the Glory. If you don't know it, you can la and um, enjoy singing outside and then our time together will be ended. Shall we stand?
<laughs> Wonderful. Can I just say, um, it's brilliant, thank you to the children who have been with us today. We are so looking forward to being able to bring you all up the front and have fun and do all age stuff like we uh, would love to. Um, let's, let's ask for God's blessing. Father, thank you that you have been present amongst us today. Thank you for the presence of your spirit. And we pray that the resurrected power of Jesus, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, will fill us and send us that you might reflect through us your light, your goodness, your power to a needy world. May you go in the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So over the course of the next few minutes, head out. We're going to sing Thine Be the Glory. If you need to head off, please do so. Make sure you get Easter eggs. And God bless you. We'll see you soon.